Happy Saturday morning. Wrapping up my work week. Shout out to my friends at that building. Amazon across the street. As always, last man standing. They even closed the bay doors. Only a few managers are in there and a few admin. And in terms of manual labor workers, I'm the last one. Special shout out to Jonathan. Get well soon, buddy. I miss you. He's usually parked next to me right here. I really miss not having the backup. If I was a manager here, I would fire 80% of this staff. Another shout out to my friend Patricia. I call her super mom. She's just as good as me and Jonathan. Super hard worker. Sometimes I have to say, hey, Patricia, it's break. Stop working for free. She works hard and she always cooks her son's dinner. And I'm always like, Patricia, just cook them a hot pocket. It takes two minutes. And she's like, no, I have to get the, I have to make them real food. Super mom. All right, today's topic is for a good friend of mine. That's a good sound. Turn on my super brights here so we could take a gander at the parking lot, see what's left. But I got a good friend. He's working on self-improvement and he really wants a hobby. So I'm trying to sell the idea of van camping to him. When I proposed that idea to him, he told me I actually went camping for the very first time this year and I really enjoyed it. And I told him, you're the perfect candidate for van life camping. Van life camping gets you out of your comfort zone. It gets you exploring when you're building up your van. It makes you creative. You're, you're thinking of constant improvements for your van. It's like the responsible modding your car because you know, you're, you're not gonna get in trouble modding your van. You're modding it so you can sleep in your van, be comfortable at camp spots, be comfortable on the road. So I think it's a very healthy hobby to have. It gets you out of the house. It gets you, uh, it makes you creative. So my friend, he's not a super into cars type of guy. He, Jeep Wrangler, we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk about Jeep Wranglers here in a second. There's like 50 of them at my job when it's uh, when everyone's here. Maserati on the side. Whose car is that? So um, let me turn this off before I forget. So my friend, he's not. He thinks vehicles are cool. Cool cars are cool. You know, he digs them, but he's not like a super fanatic. Two Priuses, Prius life. Uh, they park next to each other. That's cute. So. Yeah, he thinks vehicles are cool, but he's not super into it. So I told him, would you do a minivan build? True story. I, I don't really call it a confession because I'm not ashamed of it. I love minivans. My parents, they rented a Kia Sedona once and I thought that was really nice. And they rented a Dodge Caravan once when Dodges uh, came with the stow and go seating. I thought that was a really nice van. We did a Grand Canyon trip with my dogs and my sister and my parents in the Dodge Caravan. I thought it was really nice. My dogs were in the back row. The back row was, a, it was stow and go seating. So the seats go into the floor. So me and my sister sat in the captain's chairs and my dogs were in the back. My two dogs, when they were still around, I miss them very much. I love my dogs. This road's horrible. Let me go to the, uh, hopefully you could still hear me. Oh yeah, let's go to a smoother road. The, the audio quality was probably horrible right there. So um, yeah, we went to a, we went to the Grand Canyon in a Dodge Caravan. I remember I was in the second row with my sister, two captain's chairs, and my dogs were in the back with the seats folded. So that was a lot of fun. This thing's about to tip over. Okay, you're good. I'm gonna go 7-Eleven right now, get some food. But, um, so I told him, would you consider a minivan? And he said, yeah. So 
You know what, man? That is cool if you consider a minivan because in my opinion, if I wasn't into lifted vans, you know what got me into lifted vans? I like Motor Week a lot. And Motor Week did a review of a Quigley 4x4 van and they parked it next to a Suburban and they, it made the Suburban look like a Camry. And I was like, I gotta get a lifted 4x4 van. So I looked up 4x4 vans. The cheapest you could find a 4x4 van for is like 30 to 35 grand. If you want a really nice one, we're talking 50 to 60 grand for a used one. So I was like, I'm never gonna afford one of these. And that's how I, um, I looked up lifted two wheel drive van and I found the action van lift kit. And that's why my first, uh, my first van build was lifted via action van suspension. So anyway, I told my friend, if you're not into the whole lifted van thing, if you don't need something like me, you know, and you want to save some money, how about a minivan build? Minivans, like, how many people, like, do a minivan build? You would be super unique with a minivan build. I think lifted, like, Econoline's are already pretty unique. Because when I did my van meet, man, we saw a Jeep Wrangler meet. There was, like, a Jeep Wrangler meet going, and there was, like, at least 10 of them easy. And Jeep Wrangler meets tend to attract like dozens of people. My van meet, there was only two of us. So a minivan build would be even more unique. So the other night I was thinking like, what's another cool, unique vehicle that would be a cool camper build? I was thinking Honda Element because I saw a really cool video. This girl converted her um, Honda Element into a camper vehicle. I'll show you guys a thumbnail of that, like a screen cap of that. Check it out. I like seeing people, I like it when people are unique. So, I was thinking Honda Element, they're fairly affordable. And uh, there's a big, big following for Honda Element campers now. So it's not even unique anymore, the Honda Elements. So Dodge Caravan. You could get a good one for like seven, eight grand. If you know anything about uh, Dodge Caravans of that generation, let me know in the comments. Are the transmissions good? Or are they fairly reliable? Because that's very important. You want one that's reliable. You know, Dodge Caravans have been made for years and years. I think Dodge would have mastered them by now. I'm not a fan of their trucks and their um, vans, really. I told my friend if he's going to go full size van, get get a GM, Chevy, or a Ford. Uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of Dodges, no offense to Dodge owners, but I remember my parents had the 5.9 liter Durango and no matter what, the best fuel economy you could get on a Durango was like 12 miles per gallon. My van's a V10 and I could get like 17. So the fact that the Dodge Durango, which, you know, is probably 2000 pounds less than my van, only got 12 miles per gallon. I'm like, I don't know about Dodge vans. I don't. They're cool. They look cool. The Japanese are lowering them and calling them dodgy vans. But I told my friend, if you want a full-size van, Chevy, GM, or Ford. But if you're open to a minivan build, a minivan with a rooftop tent would be pretty sweet. park here there's no one I'll park here actually I'm not gonna take up the fuel pump let me back up into this spot right here you know the Dodge Caravan right in front of us and there was an old Dodge Caravan right now filling up see but the Dodge Caravans I like aren't this generation they're the next generation after this one that I'm gonna we're gonna see here in a second and the one getting fuel right now was the same generation as this one in front of us so it looks like they're reliable. This thing has to be like an 05. This van in front of us has to be like an 05 caravan. So I'm thinking 2010. This video is going to be all edited out. So I don't know where I'm going to share everything. But okay, I found a 2010 Dodge Caravan for like seven or eight grand. I'm going off the top of my head off memory from what I, the pictures I saved. That's a great deal for a 2010 because my van was a 99 
is a 99 with 104,000 miles. I got it for $6,700. I had to jump on the deal of this van because I wanted a V10 extended model Econoline and everything I was finding with low 100,000 miles and the engine I want extended was about 10 grand. And I was looking at 99s to like 05s. So I had to jump on the deal. So a 2010 Dodge Caravan for seven, eight grand, get a rooftop tent for that? Dude, hard top rooftop tents now, they're down to like $1,500. now the arb rooftop tents with a cool little like porch looking thing they're like twelve hundred dollars now so i'm thinking a van that dodge my parents rented that was i believe that was a 2012 so the 2010 is the same thing it has the stow and go seating so when all the seats are down you could sleep on the floor because the floor is like a flat load floor or you could put a little twin mattress on that too if you need to sleep in it like if you're on a long road trip and then when you go camping rooftop tent i almost want a rooftop tent for my van i don't need it but man maybe when the weather's not cold a rooftop tent would be fun because my van's like the roof line of my van's like eight feet almost so man you're like it's like a little tree house even on a top of a minivan i think that's the appeal of a rooftop tent it's like a little tree house for adults and you know what i think most kids wanted a tree house so i think that's the appeal of a rooftop tent so the reason i'm like throwing this idea of a minivan it's different because honda elements man they have a following and then when you go jeep wrangler they have an even bigger following i found a 01 jeep wrangler it's like i want to say it's like 12 grand So, you know, Jeep Wranglers are really pricey, even for a 01, $12,000. And then, you know, we're not even talking, starting to mod it yet. So I'm thinking a minivan, okay, a minivan. The Dodge Caravan I shared, I think it was like seven, eight grand. We'll go eight grand, because I don't remember. I'm gonna edit this all later. So eight grand at a $1,500 rooftop tent, that's 9,500. Maybe you'll add a twin mattress, or maybe you'll sleep on a sleeping bag inside the van, like, when you're on a road trip okay let's say a hundred dollars for a bed so what are we up to that's 9600 let's do some solar that's another 300 bucks a fridge that's another 200 dollars you're like we're talking 10 grand for a minivan camping build if i wasn't into lifted vans i would totally do a dodge caravan like that that generation dodge caravan and you know what's crazy they're anywhere from 180 to 250 horsepower. I'm going to admit it. I, I don't live in denial. I think a Dodge Caravan with the 250 horsepower, that would be a good race with my van. You know, you're not racing vans, but that's a good amount of power for a minivan. 250 horsepower? My van has like 305, but my van weighs like 6,500 pounds. What does a caravan weigh? Like 4,000? 4, Maybe 4,500 at most? So that's a great power to weight ratio on that van so rooftop tent solar fridge sleeping bag maybe even a twin mattress man you got a sweet build you got a really sweet build so i'm just throwing that idea out it's fun to think about projects so i'm trying to sell this van idea to my friend because i'm telling him like it's a great hobby because on your week on your days off you're you're being creative you're thinking about things to do with your van and then when you go camping, that's another thing. It's healthy to go out. And then when you're on the road, you got to, vans are comfortable. I got to say, I think SUVs are kind of overrated, honestly. I think if you put your ego aside, minivans are one of the nicest riding vehicles out there. They're comfortable. And I forgot, I almost forgot to say this. They get like 20 miles per gallon. I think the Dodge Caravan's rated at like 15 or 16 city and 22 highway. My van is like 8 to 11 city and 15 to 18 highway. And that's driving like a grandma. Dodge Caravan, you could go 70 cruise control and get 20 plus. If I tried 70 cruise control with my van, I'm getting like 13 or 14 miles per gallon. The only way I'm getting 15 to 17 miles per gallon 
60 miles per hour cruise control. That's it. I got to go 60. If I go 65, I'm getting 14. If I go 70, I'm getting like 13, 14 miles per gallon. So Dodge Caravan, you could go 70 miles per hour like a normal person and still get 20 plus. So I like talking vehicles, man. See, I love, see, John drives anything. I would totally have done a minivan build if I wasn't into these lifted vans. Just throwing that idea out there. You want to be unique? You want to be different? You want to do something no one else is doing? Or very rare because obviously someone's doing a Dodge Caravan build. That's how I found this thumbnail with the Dodge Caravan with the rooftop tent, right? Someone did it, but not many people do it. You'll be way more unique than a Jeep Wrangler. You'll be way more unique than a Honda Element or like a 4Runner, like your typical SUV with the rooftop tent. You'll even be more unique than my lifted van meet because only two of us showed up for my van meet. That's it, two of us. I think I got like four or five people interested, so that's only seven. So if my buddy ends up getting a minivan build, he'll be the only minivan build joining us for this van meet. I'm rooting for you, man. Think about it. I just want to see you camping, buddy. No matter what you do, no matter what vehicle you think is right for you, if you end up going camping, I want you joining us, man. And anyone, you don't even have to have a van to join us at these meets, man. We'll go campground, we'll go camping, we'll have, we'll bring food. It'll be a lot of fun. I want to see my meet get bigger no matter what you drive. It was a lot of fun with just me, hold fast, and my girlfriend. I want to see more of you join us. All right. Editing this video when I get home. Have a great weekend, everyone.